For those of you on the Commission, Bob Geldof, Hilary Benn, are you actually saying in this report that there are mechanisms to ensure that the money released to these governments in aid and also in debt write-off is going to go to benefit the people? Is there a mechanism in your report? Well, each donor has their own mechanism for ensuring that the money is used for the purpose for which it's intended, because that's the only way I can win the argument back home to have more. But in the end, the mechanism has got to be the accountability of but, the people. I mean, Bob, that sounds like you're just going to be asking people to sign the cheques and hope for the best. No, the specific no. mechanism is that there will be a review process. I mean, you know, I hate to refer to the acronyms, but part of the AU, the African Union, they have a, uh, a, an arm called NEPAD. And I that's don't the like... new partnership for Africa's development. Yeah, I don't actually like the word partnership. It's devalued. I prefer the word there's an alliance, a, a common interest in sorting this out. Um, I take completely Richard's point about aid. You are not going to elevate an entire continent from just throwing money. It is a composite compact. It has to be the three pillars of debt, aid and trade that allow them to trade up out of this and we prime pump the economy. None of that will work without this central issue of accountability and governance. So, yes, we will put the money to prime the pump, but we want to know what's happening. And if you don't do what's required to make this grow so that people can release their potential and dynamism, we're well, ahead there. But, but I think they, they are priming the wrong pump. I have to come back to this issue. Mm. The problems we have in Africa for the last 40 years have come precisely because of the de disempowerment of the people of yes. Africa by the state, by the government. The Africa Commission report is time and again, and I can show you, I spent all day reading it yesterday, it's coming back to the same people who disempowered the population, which led, in fact, to the lack of accountability, to the corruption, and so on. So for me, most of the aid money that is being proposed in this report must go to the grassroots, must go to people who want to set up their own companies to support those companies, instead of what the Commission is proposing, that most of that aid must go to but government. Bob has just said it's the three things. It's aid, it's better trade, so they don't have the unfair terms of trade that they've had for so many years, African countries, and also writing off debt. Are you confident that African governments, once the West, if it does, release that money, is going to use it properly? Do you think the accountability is there? No, there isn't sufficient accountability in the African countries today as we're talking. So my main focus must be on building the forces that make governments accountable. And what makes government accountable is not the donors, it's not the United Nations, it's the people of Africa who make the governments accountable. And that's where we should put our emphasis on is what do we do to create institutions in Africa that will make the governments accountable? So what in you're saying, life. the report's recommendations have the wrong emphasis? They have the wrong emphasis. Yeah. I'd, I'd say that the thing that's made Africa more accountable are mobile phones and the radio stations. Yes. I mean, these incredible yeah. radio stations that get, yes. they, the they say papers. anything, but people are able that, to phone Richard. up on their phone and get we, that. We can constantly yeah. go that these are leapfrog yeah. technologies yeah. that are talking to each other and building up those things. It, you, you just can't bypass whatever institutions are there, weak as they may be, and just say, you know what, here you go, Mets. there you go, take the wedge. Richard, here, Anna, here, here's a bit of money for you, go and build a business. It doesn't happen if there are no structures in which the business can... Economics don't exist in a void. They need the structures of a state, whatever that state is. And if you can build up weak structures, if you can build up the intellectuals of Africa so they don't have to leave the continent, 70% of whom leave the continent, yeah. fair enough, they get better jobs outside. If, they're, if they can be employed to build up their own institutions, then you do get... Um, a, a government and a structure that will allow people to build their industries. Yeah. So that must come about that sure. way. So is it a series of stages, then, that this Commission for Africa report suggests? That, first of all, you build the infrastructure that Bob Geldof has been talking about before you release all the money, or, or what? Yeah, you need both to happen at the same time. I mean, Melissa is absolutely right. In the end, it's for peoples to hold their governments to account. But at the same time, Bob's absolutely right too. You've got to have the capacity. You've got to build the capacity. And so countries, for example, which currently don't have enough money to pay decent salaries, say, to doctors and nurses, who then flee the continent and come and work in Europe and America, increasing their capacity to do that, their capacity to deliver to people, then builds confidence, and at the same time, people have got to have higher expectations of their government. And the, the two things have got to happen together, and that's what the Commission report says. Anna Tibajuka, in what way do you feel that... A report like this actually helps 
people at the grassroots in Africa to demand that accountability from their governors, from their rulers? For one thing, it analyzes the problem in a more holistic manner. But we don't need analysis, do we? Well, we, we, need need we, we need We need that yes, because enough. understanding, action is based on understanding. Yeah. Otherwise, you have very simple prescriptions. Yes. For example, you cannot bypass governments. Governments have got to do what they have to do. They have to secure law and order in order for civil society, for business to take place. So uh, as um, I would like there to say what Melis is saying, that we, we need a partnership between the civil society and governments. Civil society alone, the private sector alone, without a government, maintaining law and order, putting up infrastructure, is not going to be very successful. Richard Arnold, what do you think about the argument which says, unlike what this report is recommending, that instead of increasing aid to Africa, the way you can accelerate reform and this greater accountability that everybody agrees on is to actually turn off the aid tap? I think it, if you just turned it off, it would be pretty disastrous. I, I'm just, but I'm sceptical about where you spend it. And I think there's another point here. I mean, if you divide Africa into those countries which are doing OK, Botswana, South Africa, they don't need aid. And then, the, then there's the sort of the terrible gaping holes in Africa, the great heart of Africa, Congo itself. You couldn't put any de development aid in there. There's no government. And Somalia is another one like that. Yeah. And then there are these countries that are kind of coming out of wars. And sure, you know, when... when Ten years ago, when, when I was editor of the, uh, the Africa, editor of The Economist, and they ran that hopeless continent cover, there was a grain of, more than a grain of truth in it. There was war from right on the northeast tip in Somalia, right down to Namibia in the southwest. I mean, right across the centre of Africa, and a lot of West Africa was in chaos as well. So I think things have improved there, but I think those, sort of, those wars have died down, and where those countries are beginning to get a bit better, but some of them are get more than 50% of their budget from Hillary Benn. And, and other donors. And that's more dependent now than they were in colonial times. Right. They're not paying for themselves. And I think that, re that well, actually reduces we, we people's self-respect. We do deal with that. I mean, you you, there are the countries which are uh, inside the lowest country compacts with the rich world, the hippie thing. Um, and then we deal with low-income countries, the ones who are beginning to get a bit of purchase on the thing. And while you're absolutely right, it is preposterous. If what, so they're free of the debt, so our aid doesn't go in and they get paid out of debt, if they're free of that, perhaps the money can go into building these, these economies. It's horrible to talk about economies. You're actually talking about the people you're talking about. You're talking about people who have to make their lives, and that's what we're trying right. to do. And I don't think there's anything anyone has said that I disagree with. In fact, most of what you've said is inherent in this report.